Dean from Triple Dino YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about my favorite topic, Rajampat. Rajampat is a very special place. Uh, they call it uh, the Four Kings. Now th that's what this means in Indonesian. So in in this is the Indonesian and the English translation is the Four Kings and that refers to uh, Batana, the island of Batana, Miso, Salawati, and Wajio. So that kind of forms the boundary of the, this special area. And um, I don't know the, 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 the cultural story behind this, but it has to do with the birthing of those islands by the king. So th that's the the cultural explanation is not as detailed as it should be. I could probably look it up, but uh, it's a very special area. And this, where is this? This is in Indonesia, obviously, and it's near Papua New Guinea. And in the, right down the middle of it is on the on the on the west side is is the uh, Indonesian side of Papua, and Papua New Guinea is on the right side, a different country. So. Um, why would you want to go to what's so special about this place? Well, for divers, this is kind of like number one on the bucket list. This is the most, the highest biodiversity recorded, scientifically recorded biodiversity on Earth. Uh, for fish species, for corals, um, it's called a species factory or an incubator of life. And so we need to protect this area, Indonesia needs to protect this area, and, and it is currently protected by the Indonesian government. Approximately 14,000 square kilometers are protected now and patrolled. Um, and you do pay a, a fee, a tourist like myself, uh, pay a fee and it's equivalent to is about $100 or something, <coughs> to um, that helps pay for the patrolling of, of this area. However, it's still not a UNESCO site. Uh, or a, not so much a heritage site, but a protected area, and they're working on that. Um, they're having some, you know, it's, it's such a rich area, but it also has oil deposits in the north of it, so they're, they're sort of competing with oil companies right now and trying to get it really protected, but it's difficult right now, and that's sort of a, still a third world country. Um, the diving is absolutely amazing there, and uh, the reason why it's so amazing is because most of the islands, well, first of all, there's 17,500 islands in Indonesia. Approximately six or 700 of those are within this, around these larger islands in Rajampat. And basically, they're all kind of like atolls that's, that are like little fingers up from the depths. And they go up from about 3,000 meters in depth on both sides, with the Indian Ocean on one side and or Sea of Flores, and then on the other side you got Pacific Ocean, and um, so the water comes up in, through these fingers or atolls, and a lot of uh, upwellings and nutrients are brought to the surface in this top 100 meters at the top, and causes a very a concentration, a very unique situation where there's a lot of food, and then you get those. Um, those predator, apex predator um, pyramids going on in a very dense fashion in this area. So you get species, a very wide array of species. Um, and I can't remember the exact numbers. It's, it's probably up to about 350 species of fish uh, that Dr. Allen has uh, documented in a single dive. So that's just absolutely incredible. You're lucky to, you know, maybe to get 80 <laughs> and somewhere else. Like it's just a, amazing to get 350 or 380 or whatever it is that he was able to document in one dive. Um, corals, uh, out of the 4,000 species, there's like 1,600 that are just right in there. So that's just phenomenal as well. That's just an amazing amount of coral diversity. Um, on land, a couple of the islands, I know Wajio has a unique bird of paradise there that you can only see there, and I can't remember what it's called, but I know that the one in Batana on the island that I was on, 
um, Bhutan. It has uh, the Wilson Bird of Paradise, which is only one of about two or three places on, on Earth where you can see that bird. And I was fortunate enough to be able to go at 3.30 in the morning and go see the Wilson Bird of Paradise, which is absolutely beautiful, one of the most beautiful birds of paradise. Uh, for land-based uh, photography and uh, eco-tours. So that was fun. It's fun above and below there. So um, amazing place to visit. Very hard to get to. Um, we talked about fish, coral, birds. Yeah, okay, where? So geographically, I sort of explained that it's near Papua New Guinea. It's in the um, northeastern part of Indonesia, right, literally right on the uh, equator, so it kind of cuts right through the middle of Rajampa. So on Batana Island, just above Batana Island is the, is the equator. So most of my dives, I was crossing the equator for whatever that's worth. Um, every single time we went to and from the resort, to the dive sites, and most of the dive sites happen to be around Bataan Island, so uh, location-wise, that was pretty good. So, and, and travel, how do you get there? Well, there's a number of ways I guess you can get there, uh, but again, probably like with most places in Indonesia, you probably want to fly through Jakarta, and most of your options are going to fly through Jakarta. It's kind of either there or Bali, so those two places, and then if you go through Bali, you're probably going to have to connect through um, uh, probably through the island of Sulawesi or or Lombok or something like that, and uh, probably Makassar. You probably have to go through Makassar, uh, Bali, Mac Dempasar, Makassar, and then the little town of Sarong, which is in Papua, which is kind of the gateway to central Rajampa. <clears throat> Um, let's see here. So that's basically how you get there. And it will take you, depending on where you are, two to three days to get there. So it'll take you a long time uh, and a lot of flights to get there. But once you're there, it's a, it's a pretty magical place. And the only people that are going to be there are dedicated hardcores like yourselves or National Geographic or, or people like that. NGK, the, you know, the famous... Uh, Eco photographers, and um, so how you go there? So for how do you do it on a budget or the regular way, which is to pay through the nose? Um, you can do it on a budget. I never did that. I paid through the nose, um, and that's with the resorts. There's very few resorts there. Uh, there was only the first time I went. There was only probably six resorts, and now there's probably a dozen or more resorts now. I'm talking sort of the higher end ones with the with the huts over the or the, you know the bungalows over the water and that sort of thing, but there is some uh, there's lots of options in the cheap op, cheaper options and if you look on TripAdvisor through Rajampa you could probably find a lot of them and some of them are just amazingly affordable it seems and I don't know how safe they are and that. I didn't really feel unsafe too many times when I was in. Uh, Rajampa, but uh, I'm sure if you get off the beaten path, things get a little bit more cowboy. Because um, the, you know, the police enforcement and stuff like that is pretty few and far between. You're kind of in the jungle once you get out into those islands where there's not a lot of protection. So um, I think you just, everybody just kind of respects each other's space and where they live and work and, and hunt and that sort of thing. And, and then you're, you'll do all right. But if you look on TripAdvisor and you find responses from other people that have visited, you're probably uh, in pretty good hands if you listen to a lot of those. Uh, and obviously with anything with TripAdvisor, you know, anybody can put anything on there. So you, you probably want to follow the, the balance, the average response about what places are like. So when to go there? There's a, there's a rainy monsoon season there. And then there's a summer season or a high season and the rainy monsoon season is October through April and the summer season is May through September. Now so in this season you tend to have rain. In this season you tend to have wind. So as divers we know we would rather have the rain 
than the wind. So uh, I always go in this range, sort of January, February is when I go. And just as a tip, between January 15th and February 15th, that tends to be when the mantas come, and they follow the algae blooms. And the algae blooms will come right around February 1st. And uh, so that's a good time to go there to try to catch the mantas, because that's one of the big ticket items when you go to Rajampat is to get the algae blooms. And along with the mantas, you get a lot of other uh, you know, big projects like the whale sharks and that sort of thing. And there is a, I can't remember the name of that, Cinder Wash Bay, I think it is, which is just to the north of Sarong on Papua. And they get, they seem to get, you know, apparently, they seem to get a pretty regular dose of, of uh, whale sharks in there. So that would be sort of a day, separate day trip or two day trip if you wanted with a liveaboard or something like that in, to go into that bay. So what to expect? Um, the current is the thing that a lot of people mention because it's an atoll and you've got these two deep upwelling areas and the water flowing over top. You can get some pretty swift currents in there. Not all the dive sites are high current because a lot of the dive sites can be uh, little coves and sort of we'll call them subsites inside some of these islands. I know inside Batana Island there's a lot of cold protected areas in there that where you can dive that aren't too bad. And even places like Manta Point and stuff like that, which are very popular, sardine uh, sardine reef and things, not too bad with the with the current and your dive your dive master and captain and your boat will always check the water to see, you know, whether it is, but you're always gonna have some sort of current, but it's um, very rarely, you know, maybe one in 10 dives are you going to get, or one in 20 dives are you, going to, are you going to get it to the point where it's almost taking the mask off your face. Um, and if you get into situations like that, there's, there's ways to uh, mitigate that kind of a situation. But that's the reason why you get the life, is that current. If you don't have the current, you're not going to get the fish. So you need kind of a balance. You want something in the middle, right? You, you can't have it both ways. You can't have it completely clear water and there's no food in the water so you don't get that pyramid of, you know, that ecosystem happening, right? So you want, even when there's no fish in Raja Ampat, it looks like it's covered in fish because if you do dove other places in the world where, you know, where you, you'll see that it, basically Raja Ampat without on a, on a low fish day is like a high fish day anywhere else in the world. So you won't be disappointed no matter what happens. <clears throat> so the way you deal with the current is these, these ridges, I don't know exactly what to call them, but a lot of these dive sites are these little mini atolls underwater, these big mounds underwater. And the way to deal with them is if the current is going this way, and you've got this big reef system here. The way to deal with this is is to have the boat have the boat drop you off here, and you'll you'll enter the water in a negative air situation, meaning that or a negative buoyancy situation. So that means taking all the air out of your BCD, all the air. Well, you don't have a dry suit. <laughs> You're going to be in 30 degree water, so 29 degree water. So you enter the water, uh, not, no air, and you just go right to the bottom like a shot. And what will happen is you'll drift into the reef like this. The current will carry you into the top of the reef. And then you can just go and, and do your hunting over the reef here. Take your pictures and that sort of stuff. And then this can be like your hangout area for... Um, to meet up with the other divers and to um, plan your ascent back to the back to the boat. Um, sometimes you can have time you can go all the way around but that means fighting the current on the way back and if it's an extreme current you're not going to be able to comfortably do that. Um, the way to do it if some can do it and some can't is, you, is, is to get to the top of the reef 
and sort of split the distance and come around the maybe come around the back side to the top uh, and then take your in your interval stop right there and then just drift from there um, so that would be the way you you handle the currents there and how do you get pictures here and that sort of thing well you bring a reef hook with you so I'd strongly recommend going on eBay or something like that and get a, a double prong reef hook and uh, make you know if you can get one that's retractable those are excellent so that you can just hook them onto your BCD and when you need it or you get in sort of trouble it's kind of out of control and you go or you got a big camera or something it's really handy to have it right there hook it onto the reef and just relax and get you collect your thoughts rather than just going like a yard sale all over the place uh, with your gear and your camera uh, that, that allows you to collect your thoughts relax get a few pictures see what's going on around you get your energy back take it off the reef go for another little run and then uh, maybe two or two or three stops along the reef till you get to the back side there'll be no no current on the back side of that reef so that's kind of how you mitigate that so photography lots of opportunities for wide angle uh, there's lots of pelagics there's there's ample opportunity for macro as well so whether you take your macro lens down or you take your wide angle lens down um, it almost doesn't matter. You're going to find lots of great subjects in Rajampat. It is absolutely covered in life. Um, it would be good to talk to your DM whether that's whether they think it's a a macro dive or it's a wide angle dive. Whether there's a lot, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you have taken five or six wide angle and you want to try to get some small stuff then just take your just take your macro lens you can't go wrong anywhere in Raja Ampat with your macro lens you're gonna find stuff and as far as light is concerned obviously the more light the better some of your dives are going to be over 100 feet usually they tend not to be over 100 feet unless you're going to a special place but you know between 80 and 100 feet 90% of your dives are going to be in that range. So um, it's a very good idea to have some extra light when you're down there. A video light, flashes, depending on what, whatever you're doing, videography or, or photography. I use a GoPro to take my video and I use my DSLR to just take pictures. That way I can concentrate on just taking pictures. I don't have to worry about the focus issues with the DSLR. Uh, resorts versus liveaboards, very back and forth about that. I prefer resorts because I like a home base. I like to be able to relax. I don't like to be able to share space with people. Uh, I like to have my own place, my own place to relax and not dive if I don't feel like it. You can do that on a liveaboard, uh, but there, it is confined space. You can do more on a liveaboard in terms of sneaking into little areas. Uh, you could travel more of Raja Ampat. You know, you can go down to Misu if you're not staying in Misu Resort. You can go, um, you can dive there and then go up to the Bataan area, go into the Wajio area, so or Sawati area. So it's it's up to you which way you want to go. There's it's there's advantages and disadvantages to each of those. So the top dive sites there. Uh, Cape Cree is the most famous. That's where the world record where Dr. Allen did his world record. So that's a very popular spot. That's a high current area. So they'll definitely test that area. They won't go to that area if it's not, if it's a nasty day, known fast currents or, or whatever, just because it will sweep you. You won't have a lot of fun there. Uh, the day that I, or the two times that I've been there, uh, the currents were up pretty high. And uh, I stayed down for a while, but most of the boats aboard their dives, I just stayed down there because I had my reef hook and I was comfortable and I was able to get shot. So, and the sharks get very excited in high current. So if you like sharks, then you'll see them marauding around. And what they, what the sharks do is they try to ambush a lot of the fish in the high current because they've got control, the, the fish don't. So what they do is they go running around the bottom of the reef here. 
So we were just talking about the sharks marauding around here. So this is a good place to put your reef hook and wait for the sharks to come over the top of the reef in the current. So that's a good technique to do if you wanted to just sit there and wait and let the sharks come down towards it right at you and uh, catch good pictures. That's a good place to go to sit and wait. And you can also see the fish scramble around and try to get their bearings. So that's how you negotiate a, a high current reef like that, reef system like that. Many of them are just like that as well. So photography, there's doesn't matter whether it's wide angle or macro, you can't go wrong taking either into the water in Rajampat. Probably <clears throat> Three quarters of the pictures you're going to take are probably going to be wide angle because of the reef systems and the pelagics and that sort of thing. So those will be most of the time you're, you're probably going to get shots like that. So you're going to make, I, I usually make dedicated trips with my macro lens to like today I'm just going to shoot macro or on the third and the fourth dive or the fourth dive of the day I'd, or fourth dive is usually a night dive. The third dive I'd do a, which is the afternoon, I would do a... Um, a macro dive or something like that. So most of your dives, if you do four dives in a day, it's usually an 8.30, um, a 10.30, or 8.30, a 10 o'clock, and then a, and then a 2 o'clock. Use something on, on those in that range. That's usually what. And then in the, at night you'll have a 5.30 if you're going to do a dusk or a night dive. So those are generally the schedules there if you're staying at a resort or I'm not sure what they do on the liveaboards. Um, resort versus liveaboard. Well, that's a personal preference. Mine is to stay at resorts currently, but I would. Well, there's a lot of very reputable liveaboards. Um, my friend Ricar Buco, who operates the Andina, a very reputable uh, outfit, um, educates a lot of the local communities on how to take advantage of the tourism when they come there and, to, and make things for the tourists and engage with the tourists as a and providing an income source for the communities. So, way to go recar, and if you're out there and you want to live aboard, um, look up the Andina. And resort-wise, uh, I've st always stayed at the Papo Paradise, been treated excellent there. Beautiful accommodations there, whether deluxe or standard overwater villas. Um, the dive operation there is just top-notch. Uh, Nitrox included with their unlimited diving packages. So, um, and uh, lots of DMs who grew up right in that area who know the creatures, know their environment. They'll see stuff you'll never see. So, some of my favorite sites um, Cape Cree, that's the most famous one in Rajan Pat. That's where Dr. Allen did his two world record dives. The first one was like 286 species, the second dive he did was 380 species or something, 360 species or something like that. Uh, both world record uh, dives. It's a very, Cape Cree is a very high current area, so you may or may not be able to dive it or may or may not be able to complete a dive you may have to abort um, because of the, it does have a high current area, which also is why there's so many fish there. So if you get a high current, you get the fish, low current or off season, you won't get the fish. So it's, it's kind of a balancing act in Rajampat. Sardine Reef, that's probably my favorite reef of anywhere in Rajampat in terms of being able to get shots of anything, macro, wide angle, uh, fish, sharks, reef, you know, like reef says very interesting reef systems there, so that's my favorite. I've got Manta Point here, but it's actually Manta Sandy. Manta Sandy is uh, a cleaning station. There's a couple of uh, large oak crops where mantas go to meet up with the cleaner wrasse and, and that sort of thing and the shrimp that do the cleaning and they will um, hover, they'll come down, fly down and, and hang over the reef. And you, there's kind of like a little rock area that the divers have built, kind of like a line, a do not pass line. A little frustrating area for photographers who want to get closer than 20 or 30 meters to these things, to the, to the mantas. However, they will pass over your head. If you keep your eyes open around you, you can see them going over you and you'll get a shot. Uh, don't go chasing them past that line. Uh, Fam Islands, absolutely amazing. You type in, you Google Fam Islands, or sorry, you, you Google Rajampat, you're gonna get a picture of the Fam Islands. That's the Fam Islands. And you can actually go up 
on the government lookout and take a picture just like they have online. It's a beautiful day trip. Highly recommended. Uh, the passage, that is a little inlet on Wajio Island where it looks like you're in a river because it goes so far inland and it's all salt water so it's a great place with mangroves and it's like a giant nursery for all kinds of life there so it's an absolutely beautiful place, a lot of underwater caves, very interesting things that you'll see only there. There's a bat cave there too which is kind of cool so you can actually take the boat and nose it right into this little bat cave where there's all these bats, it's very neat. Uh, P-40, there was a bombing run to, where is it? I'm not sure if it was Lombok or someplace like that, I'm probably getting that wrong, but it flew right over um, island of Arborek back in, uh, you know, in the Second World War. Anyways, there was three planes, they were, three planes had to ditch and one ditched in about three or four feet of water which was totally massacred, the pieces everywhere. One at like 50 or 60 meters and the other one at 27 meters. So the one everybody dives is at 27 meters. It's inverted, propeller up on a hill. So it's probably 27 meters to that tip and probably 32 meters to the bottom. Um, a little bit deeper. And it is beautiful and you get to see the, the prop where it got bent over from when they ditched it from the water, from hitting the water. And it's all nicely encrusted and adopted by the reef system now. And I mentioned Arbrick, the island of Arbrick. That's a great place. Little community lives on that island. And there's a jetty, uh, very friendly people, very picturesque island. Great place for a surface interval, for sure. And a nice dock. Don't forget to take pictures under the dock, under Arbrick jetty. Dive under that jetty. There is the biggest bivalves you in the world there. Uh, probably anywhere from three to maybe even five feet across. Absolutely huge. So, and there's lots of them. There's probably 15 of them right under the dock there. So, or right in around the dock and almost in a line. So that makes for some great pictures. The next island I really love very much like Arbrek is called Swanderek. And it's wonderful as well. Wonderful little community, wonderful jetty to have a surface interval. You can walk down through the community, uh, stay on the main road pathways, don't wander into people's homes and privacy and that sort of thing, but just stay on the main pathways and wave to the people and that sort of thing. It's, uh, it's a wonderful way to see more of Rajan Pa. Um, y Island, this is uh, right in the middle of the Dampier Strait between Wajio and Batana, and a lot of the sites are in there. So Y Island is a great place for a surface interval and you can stop there and take a break and sit on the beach. I think on Y Island there's even a rope swing you can jump into the water with. There's uh, Someone has set up a little juice bar there now as well but that was not there in 2014 the last time I was there but in 2018 last year when I was there again they had this little juice bar set up mostly for younger people um, but they, that's right near the rope swing. Uh, little plug for my DM, Nimbert, uh, whose father owned this little island uh, just near Y Island, just south of Y Island, and it's a good surface interval as well. Used to have 14 palm trees on it. They got blown down in a storm there somewhere in the 2016 time period. Now there's no more. <laughs> There's no more palm trees there, so but it's still a great, beautiful little island to uh, to stop and take a breather. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions about travel, currents, equipment, that sort of thing, did anything to do with Rajanta, I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions below. So thanks for watching. Take care. Till next time.